Today is the public farm tour that I'm having here at Bloom and Wilt Gardens. This is being hosted by the Ohio State Extension Office uh, located in Ashtabula County for a Women in Agriculture farm tour series um, going on this summer. And so the first farm was in May, which was a beef cattle farm um, owned by a woman. And today is my backyard garden tour homestead. And then at the end of August is going to be a blueberry farm. So the tour is going to start in about 45 minutes, just working on some finishing touches here before the guests arrive. Um, we're going to be walking through my garden as well as the different areas around the property and giving everyone an overview of what we do here, what we grow, and kind of give some inspiration about what you can do in your own backyard. Um, we will be having some refreshment, so I have some different little areas set up and we'll have refreshments here. We've got our table set up. I have to put up these signs yet. So I'm very excited to have this farm tour. This will be the first public event that I've held here um, at my garden. So I'm pretty excited about it. Um, and I hope you all enjoy the uh, farm tour, garden tour. My son Anthony will be my cameraman for me today. And if you couldn't be here with me, I hope that you feel like you're here with us during this video recording. So welcome to Bloom and Wilt Gardens. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Oh, that's okay, they'll figure it out. <laughs> Alright, so I just want to thank everyone for coming here today and thank Julie for inviting me to be part of this Women in Agriculture tour. Um, yeah, I'll just say a couple of notes about the tour. This is our second stop of the series. We had one at a beef farm earlier in the season, and we have one more at a blueberry farm in Pierpont, Ohio, coming up on August 27th. So if you haven't registered, just send me a quick email if you'd like to attend. Um, that one's unique because she grows in an occlusal setting with netting over her blueberries. So that will be of interest to some folks. Um, but we put Alexa on the tour this year because we're doing a local food focus and um, what she has going on is kind of what's accessible to a lot of people who have backyards and she does a lot around um, transforming her own personal food system through the food that she's growing here. So thank you for being yeah. a part of the tour and I'll turn it over to you. Okay, great. Um, I'll maybe do a little quick intro about myself. So my name's Alexa Sandella. I live here with my family, my husband Carmen over there. Um, my son Anthony is my cameraman for me today. Um, <laughs> And then my other son, Lucas, is over there on the swing. He's our parking director. Um, and we have 2.75 acres here uh, on our property, here in the middle of Kingsville. Um, I kind of think this is like our secret little hideaway because really you don't think there's something like this in the middle of town. Um, so we are very blessed to be able to move here in 2016, um, especially before the housing market went crazy. <laughs> And we've been able to do a lot in that um, time, just kind of doing different projects throughout the year. Um, this property is an old farmstead. My house was built in 1850 by the Fickinger family. Um, so at one point in time, this property and the one kind of next door um, was all like working farm. Um, there used to be a mill in the back, which will walk back there you can't see the mill anymore but there's a um, river and tributary that flows down through um, to the Cognac Creek. Um, so we'll start the tour by going into the main attraction the um, home vegetable garden and uh, kind of walk you around there if you have questions or anything as we go through please um, ask away as we move on. So all right we'll head this way.
materials. I like to use things that are one, easily movable because I change my mind a lot. Um, I have reconfigured this space several times, <laughs> um, especially as I keep expanding it, I change how I want things to look. Um, but I like to at least start in the springtime with like one main gardening bed to get really early spring crops because I'm planting um, things like we've got kale in here, celery, more kale, cabbage, fish chard, um, all of those things I plant about end of March or very early April. Um, a lot of people that aren't familiar with gardening don't know how much you can actually grow very early before that May, you know, frost date. Everyone says, oh, you have to wait till after Mother's Day or Labor Day. And I like to push that and say, no, you don't. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that you can plant very early. Um, and the same goes through the back end. So after we have our first frost in October, there's a lot of plants that are gonna live past that all the way until it starts snowing and, and you know, at that point, every, nothing really can survive too well. Some things. Um, so that's kind of what I have a lot of in this area is just all those early spring crops. Um, a lot of them, you know, have gone to see they bolted. So this is an endive plant, um, which can be very unusual. Lots of people maybe not be familiar with what different plants look like when they go to see. Um, so that's part of the thing that I like to do with um, garden education. I do a lot of social media content around garden education um, on my Facebook and YouTube and TikTok and I show things like this. Um, you know, what do plants look like when they go to seed? Because I remember as a new gardener, I had broccoli and I, <laughs> there's these yellow flowers coming. I remember asking my mom, I said, um, what is this? <laughs> like, this isn't broccoli. What's happening? She's like, it's done. You're, you're done. I'm like, oh crap. All right. Well, yeah, so I thought that was chicory. Yeah. I'm looking at it. I'm saying that's chicory. Why does she have chicory in her garden? Yeah. Well, you could because chicory is an herb, and yeah, you can use that. So I like to teach these kinds of things. What things look like um, as a plant goes through its life cycle, and then um, a lot of focus around seed saving. Because again, if you're trying to do a sustainable sort of garden, saving your own seeds is part of that um, to be able to just keep planting and planting, not have to buy any. So that's why you'll see lots of different plants kind of looking crazy like that. Just because I'm letting them create seeds and I will save those and then be able to plant them again. Um, and then as different plants get pulled out, um, a lot of the spring crops, I had blank spaces. So I've started to sow more things for the fall. Um, so like in here, this is soybean. I haven't grown soybean before, but you know, I want to try edamame. And I've got other things like radishes and rutabaga, um, broccoli and cabbage. So like the really tiny things, those are all going to be for my fall crops. And you get those planted in late July, or even if you want to go home and do stuff like that now, it's still time. You still have time. Um, we just want to get those things mature before it starts to get really cold in October. When those plants are mature, they can handle colder weather through December. So that's kind of this, this first area. Um, do you have any questions before we what move on? Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. So that's amaranth. That's a variety called Love, Love Lies Bleeding Amaranth. Um, it can be used like as a grain. So if I wanted to dry that and, and harvest it, I could use it in um, kind of like quinoa. It's sort of similar to that, but I grow it because um, it's pretty. And I guess that's another main thing you'll see throughout my garden is that I grow things that are pretty just because they look nice, they bring in pollinators, and they make me happy. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, you had a question earlier about purple flowers and beans. Um, so over here is a variety called dragon tongue. Um, it's either dragon tongue or rattlesnake. I don't know. Is it rattlesnake? Okay. Some of them look familiar, but... These beans, um, it's a pole bean. The Japanese beetles have been enjoying them. Um, but they have purple flowers. So there's different bean plants that have purple flowers or white flowers based on the variety. But um, these ones are cool because they're streaked. So there's different like variegated looking beans that you can grow. And you can still plant beans. I mean, there's still time I, I have if you been want trying to grow them. Yeah. yeah. So um, I guess another thing that I like to do is try different varieties of plants. So while you might have your traditional green bean, I like to find heirloom varieties or 
hybrids that make different colors, different leaf colors, different taste textures, because um, there are thousands of different kinds of plants out there. Um, there are, I don't, I don't use the bags anymore, like the trap bags. Um, I had used those in the past and when I did, I would get more. Um, even if I put them, like you say, put the trap bags like on the corners of your property. I would do that and I would still get hundreds, thousands more than I do now when I don't use anything. Um, so I would deter against the trap bags. Um, otherwise, soapy water, I mean, it's things like neem oil you can do. Um, for me, I kind of am a lazy gardener when it comes to pest control, and I just, I'm like, well, okay, that's going to happen. Um, at some point, the ecosystem will start to balance itself out a little, you know, but some years are better than others. Um, last year, I did, my beans were completely devoured. They don't look so bad, you know, I'm like, they don't look terrible. So, um, that's just kind of how I take it with an organic approach, is just letting things be. I've got my squash over there that, um, I've seen the squash bug eggs all over the leaves and I could take the measures to pick them off and all of that, but I'm like, well, I don't have time for that and I got other stuff to do. So I guess we'll see how long I get squashed till they die. And that's how I kind of take that approach. And so different plants and things might have more holes than others. Um, but I do notice like, um, you have something like trap crops. So there might be um, a plant that a lot of bugs really like and they're just gravitating toward. I would leave that one and then they will leave the others kind of more alone because this weak one, they're like, this is our feast, and they're going to focus on that rather than, you know, everything else. Yeah. So. All right. You may also notice my garden gets very hot <laughs> um, this time of day. Actually, I scheduled this, I think it was like March or April we scheduled this, and I wasn't thinking about the heat. Um, if I had do-over, I would probably have done an evening <laughs> tour. <laughs> um, Part of this property with the, the rivers and the tributaries, there's a lot of natural springs that are all underneath this ground. Um, my neighbor Leslie there shaking her head because she had a basement. I live across the street. She had a ba <laughs> basement with the springs water. coming up through her basement. Yeah. Um, so it's very humid in here because of just how much water content is going through the ground, um, which the plants love. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right, I guess we'll walk this way. Um, more plants that I start very early spring, so behind Ooh, me will be like my brassicas, and that includes things like broccoli and Brussels sprout. Um, I grow kohlrabi. Does anyone know what that is? A lot of you know what that is. That's good. A lot of, a lot of people don't know what it is, <laughs> so I'm glad you don't know. But, um, so I've got purple and green kohlrabi growing in here. They kind of get nice fall shape. Um, the uh, roots, I guess. Um, you'll see throughout the garden a lot of different vertical things, so I like to use, these are cattle panel fences, um, livestock, they use these for livestock, um, and we, I use them as um, archways and to grow things vertically, so again if you're gardening in a small space, um, grow up in, in any application you can, and this is a a more cost-effective way than buying like a specifically marketed garden trellis. Um, using different materials like that can help you save some money and also grow vertically. Um, I grow flowers and beans, squash, um, mostly on the shelves of empty cupboards. Um, so um, yeah, these are just some different areas through here. here. Um, when it's not all overgrown, it kind of looks like a golf course with the little, <laughs> with the little bays. Um, let's see what we can look at through here. Um, again, more things that I've gone to see. So this is lettuce. Lettuce in here. These are carrots that are in their second year. So carrots will flower in their second year. Um, if you don't pull them out, the root of the carrot, or the carrot is the root. Right, so if you pull out the carrot, it can't finish its life cycle. So carrots in their second year grow these big, beautiful flowers. They're not so pretty now because they are, um, well, they're drying out. But we will save the seeds that are That's grown in there. Yeah. No, I thought that was canine. Are they related? They are related. Canine is in the carrot family. Yeah. 
because then you can eat the queen and flowers. So I, I was like, oh, so they're related. Oh, yeah. Yep. There you go. Did not yeah. know that. I just yeah. about the flowers. Yep. So if you grow carrots, maybe leave a couple behind and just forget about it. Next spring, you'll get some really beautiful big blooms. Um, they're not in a not so pretty phase right now, but they're making tiny little seed pods. You all can come and you know look at them as you walk by. Same thing like with this lettuce. A lot of the seeds they they form these little pods, so it flowers. It's really beautiful, and then the flowers go away, and there's all these pods left behind, and that's where the seeds are forming. So, um, and then behind you are, I've got uh, potatoes growing in there, bush beans. I try and pack a lot in small spaces. Um, you don't have to follow like seed packet requirements. You see it says, you know, three feet apart and you know, two feet, whatever. I don't listen to any of that. I just pack stuff in. And <laughs> as you learn to grow and garden over the years, you do get to realize like what things do need more space than others, um, but a lot of plants actually like to be more close together and that helps with weed. Um, weed management, um, less ground exposed means less weeds are gonna be coming up. Um, and it also helps with like the way that the roots draw up nutrients from the soil, water, all these plants, they are talking to each other under the ground through their root system. Um, I love the class that I took with you and John on how to build healthy soil ecosystems. So plug for Red Pete Row <laughs> whenever you have that class again, um, because it's all of that really just helps build your garden. Um, planting different things in areas, you can see like my brassicas look really good. They never look this good. Um, usually, I've got worms eating them all up but I have them planted in ways and it just kind of worked out this year where we've got this carrot growing and this lettuce that grew and I had cilantro everywhere. I had to trim that back now, but all of those things also help deter pests. So the more variety you have in a space um, does deter the pests as well. So any questions in this area? Are these tomatoes? Those are ground cherry. Yeah, yeah. My friend, um, Ashley gave me a couple of her plants last year, and I didn't plant any of these. <laughs> they, they all they all came up on their own all over the place. Where places I didn't even plant them. I'm like, okay, we're gonna have lots of ground cherries. So <laughs> they are good. That's why I'm like, you know, as these things are done and come out, like I have a lot of things I'm ready to harvest. I have these other crops coming in behind them. So, you know, you can always fill your blank spot with like the next wave appropriate to that. Um, I think we're just kind of doing the perimeter and then we'll walk through the middle. So back here is squash. I don't have um, squash. I have squash bugs. I saw a whole bunch that had just hatched today. So this will probably be dead next week. It is what it is. I'm not going to try and combat it. Um, it's just an issue that I have learned to accept. But to prepare for that, because I knew that was going to happen, I've got sunflowers that are growing in here and like zinnias. So I'm always trying to think ahead about like, okay, if something does die, what can take over? Um, sunflowers are giving you more height and for vert more vertical gardening. So again, balancing your low plants with like tall plants and it just adds a visual interest. That's also very pretty. Um, and then I've got lots of tomato plants that have volunteered. Used to have a compost pile here. Um, lots of tomatoes grew and then I just decided I'm just gonna let them do their thing because my squash is gonna die at some point and I'll just let them ramble and whatever. Um, down here, this is our first berry patch um, of raspberries. So there's a couple berries here and they're left on the um, on the vines, feel free to pick it up if you want the bug. <laughs> you ne never know what you might find in a berry. Um, but last year we harvested um, 50 pounds of berries over the course of like three weeks. We were out picking all the time. Um, we did a heavy prune last year um, to help with the plants to kind of regrow, give them that refresh. Every few years it does help the plants kind of reset a little bit. Um, so we didn't have as many berries this year, but hopefully next year we'll be back in the berry business. <laughs> and these, um, 
These grew uh, the beginning of July. So they're just red raspberries. So, all right. Uh, we will walk this way. We can go down the middle aisle. Um, so, but yeah, interplanting with different herbs and things, I think, is probably the most effective in my experience. Um, so on that first trellis behind you, um, I, I have uh, yard-long beans growing. They're going to make beans that are about this long. Oh, I had nice. hoped they were producing by now, but it took a long time for my beans and like even my cucumbers and everything to get going um, with the heat in the early season and then all the smoke cover from Canada and the wildfires and all that. It just kind of slow things down a little bit, but um, they're taking off and uh, I'll share pictures and stuff on my social medias and all that once they grow, because they're really cool. Um, they taste good too. They're just like normal green beans, but they're super long. Um, and then also back in there, I've got um, a celery variety uh, called Giant Prague Celery. It's supposed to make a really big root ball like this that you can like use in stews. Um, so. I've learned that celery takes a really long time to grow. Uh, I started that in February and it's still, it's not close yet. <laughs> I don't know. Have you grown celery? It seems to like the, the climate though. There's does it? Where it does not grow at all. Okay. So like my husband Kentucky is not happy, but no. it's very happy up here, but it's, yeah, it's good. a little bit of time. Good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good to know. Um, this mass behind me is asparagus. Um, this is what asparagus looks like when it grows up and you can stop cutting it. Um, this asparagus bed was planted, I think in 2017. Yeah, 2017. Um, after you plant asparagus, you're supposed to wait three years before you can harvest it. Um, there's a lot of root system building that has to happen and if you harvest it too soon, it can mess up that how, how that plant's developing. Um, so I had to wait till 2020 before I ever picked this beer, um, but it was worth the wait because now it just comes up like clockwork in the spring and this bed can last for like 20 years. Yeah. It has the amount of show. No wonder it's so good. It has. Yeah. At, it will create um, like a red seed and then those will fall and then create new plants. So there might be a couple little buds. I, I see a couple little green buds starting, but they'll turn red and they just fall. And um, yeah, more will come up. I see a couple small spears down there, which are probably newer plants. But at this point, after about mid June, I stopped cutting them um, and I let them go to this stage because this is the time of year where they're collecting all the energy and everything they need to go dormant through the winter and then regrow. So that's why you can't keep cutting it. Um, it has to have that period of time for it to grow out. How much, uh, how much, how much uh, asparagus do you get out of uh, an area that size? Um, I mean, it's enough for our family. Yeah, it, and the way it grows too, it grows kind of at different rates. So I might pick, you know, two spears on a Monday and then maybe Wednesday I'll get two more and I have to wait a couple of days to have enough for for a meal, so if you wanted a large amount to harvest at one time, you might probably would want more space than this, but um, this has been pretty good for us. He, he likes asparagus and other son hates it, so <laughs> we, we do okay. Um, and then I have as a ground cover underneath our uh, wild strawberries and a bunch of peas. <laughs> <laughs> Some things I just like, it's fine. <laughs> Um, and then I've got uh, cabbage growing in here, um, been harvesting, and as I harvest and pull off the ucky leaves, I just lay them back down. Super um, cool. Yeah, it's called like mulching in place. Mm -hmm. So I like to take like grass clippings or straw or you know certain big leaf plants like this, and I'll just put it down. Um, there's a saying that I heard once: is if you don't cover Mother Earth, she'll cover herself. She doesn't like to be naked, something like that. Uh, yeah, so, and that's why if, if you have bare spots, why you get so many weeds? Because the soil's exposed and something's gonna grow in there. Um, so I try to keep things heavily mulched again with like things like that. These leaves, I just picked them off yesterday and threw them down. They'll turn brown, they'll decompose, and they'll suppress the weeds until I put something else to grow in.
Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, yeah, the, it'll to, feed the soil. Everything yeah. you want it to all break down and just go back into the soil. Absolutely. All right. Um, I guess we can behind you just another garden area space. Um, I have kind of a variety of hodgepodge going on in here. Um, sweet potato vines growing low, so we'll have sweet potatoes to harvest. Um, some of the sweet potato vines are climbing up the ablees, and then I have another like flower variety growing up there. So this whole thing within the next month will be completely covered. Um, and then again, just adding more height, height in different areas. So you have your low growing plants like the sweet potatoes, sunflowers for height, um, lots of zinnias and I have kale in here. So this is just kind of like a mix of stuff. You know, I just put everything in one bed, <laughs> um, just for that variety. Um, this is fennel. Um, if anyone wants to come try it, you can pick off a sprig and eat it. It tastes like licorice. I don't know what I'm going to do with all of it yet, but I thought it would be fun to grow and it's pretty. It's good in sauces. Okay. That's good to know. Do you dry it? Like dry it and grind it up? Um, yeah. I haven't grown sauces since I was a kid. I will do that. Syrup. It's been a seed too, right? Oh. I will. I have a lot. I will try that. That's awesome. Good, and the good. seeds are really good too. And um, in hi during history, women um, would take the seeds and put them in their purse, so they would have a little snack during church. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not the hunger. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Aww. And butterflies. Me all There's a butterfly. Do you know the butterfly that uh, loves fennel? Uh, mm -hmm. Swallowtail. Maybe some kind of swallowtail. Very nice. I love that. Love that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and one thing with this bed, it's kind of in an odd place in like my kids, and my family, they always will walk right through it. <laughs> so I purposely planted very tall things <laughs> this year to like <laughs> stay out. <laughs> um, back behind you in this bed is onions and I have some purslane, which is um, like a, mm -hmm. a green, I don't know how you would describe purslane. You can eat it. Succulent. It's a succulent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can eat it. It just it, it finds its way in different areas of my garden, so I just kind of left it. Um, and then more beans to grow up the trellis. A lot of the stuff in my different beds are very much ready to be harvested, so that's kind of be my task this coming week is harvesting a lot of stuff. Um, but I wanted to make sure I had something to show today. <laughs> um, so yeah, we can kind of come this way if you want to like wrap around in these areas, feel free. Um, there's pathways everywhere. Um, I'm attempting to do a, like a, a three sisters garden. Um, however, it's more of a two sisters. But I've got melon plants growing low to um, grow around this corn. So typically it's corn, squash and beans that you see like in the three sisters but I'm doing it with melon plants. Um, I have a really hard time growing melons. I think part of it is because it's very sandy soil here. Um, so the land north of 90 in most cases is going to be on the sandier side because the lake um, shore used to come up this far. So this was essentially beach at one point in we time. Have lake property. We have a lake for our property. Um, and then obviously as you go south, it turns clay. So it's um, very dry here. I do struggle with, you know, trying to keep things watered early in the season, especially before like the root systems have really gotten go going. But um, yeah, that's why I struggle with melons. I just don't think they can suck up enough water here. But. Um, that's this area and then back here I've got more potatoes and corn growing. I'm trying to do this thing where again I'm maximizing my space. Potatoes grow deep, corn has a very shallow root. So I have my corn growing or like right next to the potatoes. Um, and I'm gonna see how that all works out. Ooh. If it's a successful crop then it, I, um, I can get two crops in one space. So you have your corn and potatoes low. Just, I guess you have to be careful digging out the potatoes, you know, not to kill off your corn, but time, time everything, time your planting. <laughs> um, 
this is my greenhouse that um, it's not heated, but I grow um, tomatoes and peppers in it this year. Um, I can plant in here about three weeks earlier, three to four weeks earlier than the outside crops, so like two weeks in September. Um, and then in the fall, I'll keep this going until the end of October, and I'll still be getting tomatoes and peppers then. Yes. How's your having at it doing? It's doing good. They're um, green and small. They're still green and small. Oh, I but haven't even gotten any yet. It's oh no. Plant. Yeah. It will. And I put heat loving stuff in here. Um, I haven't grown through the. I just noticed that it's coming out. <laughs> 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 well, that one's outside. Um, these plants are immaculate compared to the ones that grow outside. Again, because like they're completely covered. They're not getting the rain and the wetness on them. Um, so. Any type of hoop house or structure like that is really great for our season extension. But yeah, I haven't grown in the winter yet because the last two years I've, we've been keeping our chickens in here through the winter. Um, we um, Their current coop isn't really winterized, so we keep them in here and they've done great. But they poop everywhere and make a mess, but it's great fertilizer and the plants absolutely love it. Um, but I think this year I might start to grow some stuff in here because we got a new chicken coop which is that big awkward red thing over there is going to be our <laughs> our new chicken coop it was a stagecoach that was used in parades and we're going to convert it into a chicken coop um we just got to do some stuff to move it but yeah but yeah you guys are welcome to walk um through there's a door on the other side and then we'll meet down at the other end um we're almost done in this area i know it's really hot Electric. yeah how hot does it get in here? Um, around 100, maybe more. There's a thermometer. Yeah. You can see what it says. Yeah. Oh, good. How's that working out for you? I hope so. Here are all tomatoes. Um, I've got about 21 different varieties of tomatoes. I do different heirlooms um, or hybrids. I like to try new things. Um, I think one of the one of the things that um, I try want to educate people on is that there are more tomatoes than just a beefsteak. I sell seedlings in the spring, and the thing that people always ask me for are beefsteak tomatoes, <laughs> specifically beefsteak. And I'm like, well, I've got all these other kinds of red ones that their name isn't beefsteak, but they're essentially the same thing. <laughs> Would you like to try one? No, I want the beefsteak. Okay. There's a whole wide world out there. <laughs> There's a whole world. There's like 10,000 tomato varieties, but everyone wants a beefsteak. Um, my favorite are really like darker tomatoes. They have a very different flavor profile. They're not as sweet. They're savory. Um, you can eat those just raw and they're just absolutely great. So I've like got 10 different really dark tomatoes. Um, that's the guinea. That's the guinea. <laughs> that's the guinea. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, we start these from seed in March, um, transplant them in May. And then I like to use this kind of string tie trellising. Um, there's too much going on here for cages. And I feel like this is a good way to be able to keep the plant supported um, as they grow. Do you just that string and they do wrap themselves or do you have to wrap them? I have to go through and like direct them. <laughs> yeah, otherwise they'll just kind of like go. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah but it's, what if you keep up with it, it's just kind of you walk through and twist it as they grow. Um, so we, I, this last week I started like harvesting tomatoes. So they're, they're coming on, they're about to go crazy. Um, and then I grow this many because I can them. I do tomato sauce um, and pizza sauce, so you don't have to grow this many tomatoes. I grow it because if to get like eight quarts of sauce, you need like 50 pounds of tomatoes. Like it, they break, they shrink down a lot. Um, so it's curious if you have a problem with light. I mean, I'm just down the street. We have light everywhere. Um, so I prune pretty heavily. Not, not as much this year, but like when they start to get these yellow leaves, like cut those off right away. Um, but also I like to cut a lot of the branches anyways. Like I leave a lot of suckers, but I cut the branches. Um, the more airflow you can get through your plant, the less 
light issues you will have, but we've had a lot of rain this year, so it might come to a point where it's just not much you can do about it, but um, yeah, just try and cut off the yucky parts as soon as you see them. Um, I also keep about a the first 12 inches on the stem completely bare. Um, if you have leaves that are touching the ground, um, it can like backsplash the, the stuff from the soil and get in and it can easily spread, but I've got a lot of branches that have just fallen and I've not picked them up. So at some point you just gotta kind of decide this is life. <laughs> this is what it's gonna be. It'll still give me fruit, so um, yes. What's this lower kind of? Those are carrots. Oh, those aren't carrots. Yes. Yep, those are all carrots. Um, planted those earlier this spring and then this area is all potatoes, so. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the overview of, of the garden, the home garden. I think it's about 2,000 square feet, this whole space here. Um, I grow a lot of food uh, through most of the season. I would really say January through March is when I'm not growing food. Um, stuff like carrots and different root vegetables can stay in the ground even after it snows. I've harvested carrots on Thanksgiving. On Christmas, under snow, I dug the snow away and pulled some carrots up so you can use the ground as your refrigerator. Um, so that's my intention as I start to pull all this stuff up that's ready for harvest. I'm putting in more carrots, more beets, more of those root crops that I'm just going to kind of leave. But you got to get them started now while it's still warm. They have to get mature before, you know, our daylight goes away and all that and it's dark and sad again. The potatoes, so. do, they, do they make it through the cold? Um, no, not as much. I would say that probably through November, maybe December, but not too. They're, they're not as hardy like through the actual snowy winter months. Yeah, yeah. But, all right, well, we can start to um, head back up to the front if you want to grab a drink, and then we'll kind of go on to the next. Thank you. 
But yeah, I, that's what I like to do. I like to mix the perennials with the vegetables. I know you're a little sitting, but... Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's what I think, no. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to get the turkey. The one over here is marshmallow. lazy composter and just make a big pile because like our scraps, plant scraps, chickens, you know, waste, all of that was just in a big pile back here. Um, but I've been wanting to do this for years where it's like a three bin compost system. So the first side here is like all the fresh, um, fresh stuff. And then after some time you flip it to the middle and then you flip it to the last one when it's about finished. And then that's when you can use it. So you kind of can keep up with the system. When I have just a big pile, like, I don't do anything. It's just there for years. Can't flip it or turn it, so I'm hoping, like, I'll keep up with it now. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but these are just made out of pallets, so, you know, again, kind of reusing free stuff. You can usually find pallets for free um, and set up something like that. So. And I'll feed my garden with the compost that I'm making. But, so at this point, so these are like the two main gardens. Um, so we're gonna take you three o'clock. So we're gonna take you around like so the outer perimeter. I've got some other growing space on the outer side, and then we'll walk um, into the back wooded area and see the tributary back there. And it's, it's cool and shaded back there. So we'll that'll we'll be better, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, yeah. Um, because I want 
I like it because it's got like that sour. Like yeah, the lemonade. I mixed them. She's got two separate. So this is going to be the yeah, this is gonna be our chicken coop. Oh, should I get down? No, you're fine, honey. You can be up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold it steady. Oh, okay. Um, this is my greenhouse. This is where I like start my seeds and keep all my supplies. I'm using it now to dry stuff out. So I've got herbs in there. I'm gonna put my onions and garlic in there to dry out um, once we pull those out. Um, and then behind you is going to be um, strawberry bed. So my mom is really like doing different landscape garden designs. This was kind of her idea to do a tiered um, garden bed and then imagine the strawberry just kind of all crawling through there. Strawberry Yeah. So this um, crop here is garlic. It's very ready to come out. Um, that's probably what I'm gonna do this week is pull it out. So I plant my garlic in October and then harvest it in July typically. Um, I planted 600 cloves last fall. So I anticipate 600 new bulbs. Um, and what I do with my garlic every year is I keep half of the cloves for us and the rest get replanted. So I'm basically doubling my garlic every single year. In 2020, I did like 30. I haven't bought any garlic. So I just keep replanting half. Um, so this year I anticipate to have around 3000 cloves around there. So again, we'll keep half, the rest will get replanted. And then eventually I want to be able to yeah. grow enough to be able to sell garlic that's kind of my my end goal there um i'm not helping without having to buy you said you're not helping <laughs> uh yeah without having to buy it so that's kind of a uh a, a project that i'm working on but it'll take several years but it's you know kind of an investment thing with that much garlic how do you store it all um well we let it cure like and dry out really well first and then i have like these cloth bags that we just kind of keep them in. Um, we may do a lot of like powder, so we'll dry them and blend them up into a powder. Um, but the clothes last pretty long. I mean, I think I still have garlic in the house from last year's harvest. They have like kind of dried out a lot. They're really hard, but it's fine. I just yeah. grind them up at this point. Cook so. them into something, yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. It's pretty well good. The curing process is the most important, I think, like after you pull them up, lay them out, let them fully dry, um, cut off all the greens for like two weeks at least, and then they're ready for storage. Very cool. Yeah. Lot. It is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. And it's kind of problem you want to have. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then this area is our blueberry patch. Um, I have about 19 blueberry plants. They're in their third years. Um, I have a lot to learn about blueberries still, so I will be joining the next tour <laughs> for at the blueberry farm to learn from her. Um, so I guess perennials take a long time to grow, so if you want any kind of berries or trees or anything like that, start now, because you're going to wait several years, but the, the return will come up, you know, it'll, it'll pay out, you'll have a good return out of it. Um, any questions on the blueberries? You're welcome to go look at close to them if you want, um, or we can keep moving on towards the back in the. I'm trying to work this in the green. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> what year did you say these ones are on? Um, third year? Third. So I bought um, these are big forms in Madison. They're not open anymore. But they're not open. They're on they now. were a one year old bear root pot. So we bought the plant. Um, so they're. Anthony, you've got work to do. You've got berries to eat and berries. Sorry. There's berries. He comes out and harvests them. Uh -huh. They never make their way back to the house. He's a harvester, huh? He's my number one berry harvester. Talk about 
up the wine berries. Oh yeah. So when we moved to this property, the tree line was um I'm stalking her. She doesn't know. I'm stalking her. So we've been kind of working her. to clear areas out. Um, yeah. One of the things that's kind of I'm interesting afraid. about our property is that we grow wine berries. Has anyone ever heard of wine berries? Oh. Um, it's like a Mama. variety of berries. At some point in history, they were brought to the United States. But these grow wild here. Um, they're very aggressive. They're all over here, by the way. I know, we have work to do. There's hundreds. If you would like to try a wine berry, you can come and try them. They're kind of like raspberries. They're a little more tart. Um, the berry itself is got kind of like a kind of a sticky tackiness to it, but they taste really good. Just watch the thorns. These, these uh, bushes are more aggressive than other berries. But yeah, go ahead and, and take some berries and try them. Yeah. Like you really want Does anyone want some? I'll give you the other one. Hey, I'm like a deal. Yeah. Like I said, though, they are aggressive. They probably are invasive. So, if you want. Who cares? Right now, we're fighting for things. Oh, yeah. I got that everywhere. I'm allergic to it. You're brushing. Okay. Dark one. There's a lot back, like back there. Well, we gotta, we gotta start picking them. We gotta get dressed to pick them. Love, pan, <laughs> yeah, they, those are nasty. You don't look, you look like, like you're a ghost because you're just wearing all, all white. You look like a ghost. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to move it out of the way so you didn't get your arm and I caught your leg. Yeah, they're not right there. Okay. Yeah. What are you going to do? Pie All right. Tell me a bad idea. Pie. We're going to walk down, um, down this pathway. We didn't mow it. Off the pathway, there may be poison ivy, so be warned. Um, <laughs> but we'll walk down here and I'll kind of show you the way way back around. Yeah. There's so many berries in this. Everything. More wine berries. <laughs> they are everywhere. <laughs> We're gonna stay on the lower path. That snail? You wanna do the snail, bud? Oh <laughs> uh, so I see a lot of Don't land that. <laughs> it broke. There's snail food. Anyway, back in the 1850s, this land was didn't have any trees. It was all cleared out. The only tree that was left was that one over there, that great big giant one. That's the grandfather tree. That's the grandfather tree. And all these trees in here, what they were in here back in the 1850s. And over here, and this across the creek over here, they had an old mill. And they were, whatever they did for old mills, I don't know what they did. Yeah, there's an old foundation over there with all the rocks and stuff. There is an old foundation there. And then over there, where that low area is, they, there was like a, 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 a water area where like they plugged up part of the creek. And then the water would congregate in there and then it would, they had a mill and a wheel. And then it was to be and then out. <coughs> And then it kept going that way, and then there was more other mills down the way. Cool. Yeah. So. so all this water diverts into the Conneaut Creek. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of these little tributaries that go through. There's another section that comes from that way um, on my neighbor's property. So we don't really use this area a whole lot for anything like growing food or planting. It's just more of kind of retreat. 
um, although there's a lot of mosquitoes <laughs> in the evening. Um, but we also have a lot of dragonflies that come out through here too, so that's a fun time of year. So. I am jealous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, secrets in Kingsville. <laughs> Yeah, there's like a little waterfall back there, but it's kind of hard to see with all the, with all the growth, so you can probably hear it. So feel free to kind of walk around. I don't know if we have really much else about this area. And it goes and that way, and it goes around the other side. So I don't know when they did that. Alexa, do you know when they put in the, the mound? The walkway. The is, what? When did they put it in this ground? Do you know when they did that? I don't know when they did that, but yeah, it goes, it continues the whole way across. Wow. I see. 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 I I would love to have yeah. a space like this yeah. when I was your age. Yeah. That's cool, yeah. man. Yeah. 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 Let me know, or any of my family, and we'll be happy to chat with you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you.